How's it going guys, it's the final render here and welcome to the Fallout 4 creation kit. I've decided I'm going to do a very quick tutorial to tell you how to restore some places in Fallout 4 back to good condition. It's something I've done an awful lot on the channel and you guys seem to like it. So I'm going to show you guys how you can do it yourself. It's pretty easy overall and it's going to be good fun. Alright, so once you're in the creation kit, some people have asked me how do you even start? The way to start is that you go up to this folder here so we can load in Fallout 4. This menu will pop up and it shows you all of the mods and everything you have installed for Fallout 4. I've got quite a few as you can tell. But as you can see here, we have got these master files and we've got Fallout 4 ESM, DLC robot, that is Automatron, etc. We've got Coast there, that's Far Harbor. And we're going to work with just vanilla Fallout 4. So the way to do that is to double click on Fallout 4 and then hit set as active. That means we are going to be working in the Fallout 4 base game. If we wanted to, we could select DLC Robot to work, work on the Automatron assets, Far Harbor, etc. But we are going to work in Fallout 4. Once that's done, you hit OK. OK, so now that's been loaded and we can see in our cell view right here that we have got all of the cells, i.e. all of the loading areas of Fallout 4 loaded up. Now I believe the cell view window is there by default, but just in case it's not, what you can do is you can go to view and then it will give you the other windows you can open including the cell view window. So once that's in there, you can actually start to load a cell because if you don't load a cell you won't actually see anything. So to start off with, I think we are going to look at how to change the wall and floor textures of certain things in order to make them look good. Now, a good place to do this I have found is at the Boylston Club. This is a really good example of how to do this. Alright, so in your cell view we need to find the Boylston Club. Now, they're kind of arranged alphabetically down here by the editor ID, but that's actually not a very good way to find what you are looking for. Typically, you want to click on the name, and now all of the names of the cells will be arranged in alphabetical order in this second column here. So that we can scroll down in the interiors one, because we are going to be working on an interior cell. If you wanted to, you can select Commonwealth, and that will load up all of the exterior cells that you can work on. But in this case, we're going to work on an interior cell. Okay, so let's find the Boylston Club in this panel right here. And it'll be somewhere in the B section, seeing as that is what it is called. Okay, here we go. It is right here. It is the Boylston Club, so it was under T. And then we can double click on that cell. And it won't appear to actually do anything initially, but it will be slowly loading the interior cell right here. Okay, so now we have got it in our render view window. This is how we can actually start to work with everything. If you want a quick look at the controls, you can hold shift to tilt your camera, zoom in with your mouse wheel, click down on your mouse wheel to move side to side, etc. Okay, so the Boston Club, as you can tell, is a bit of a wreck. And we want to actually change this so it looks a bit nicer, so to speak. So now you may be a bit confused when you try to click on stuff and you'll see that you're actually not able to click on the things you want. And that is because you are actually clicking on such as these dimmers and all of these light rays and stuff like that, which is actually stopping you from selecting the thing you want. A way to do to get rid of this issue is to go up to the view and find your layers window. And once you have got your layers window right here, you will be able to disable temporarily some of these things. They are normally labeled with FX at the end, in which case you can just click on the little I symbol and now they are no longer visible and now we can start to click on everything. And then when you are ready to load back into the game, just turn them back on again and they will return. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of all of those dimmers, let's actually work on trying to fix some of the walls and floors, etc. So as you can see here, we have got this wooden floor here. It looks okay, but it's very dark and very dirty and we don't really want that. So if we select the floor and then right click and select edit, as you can see, we have got this other window right here. And this tells us everything about the item. It gives us its name inside the game. It tells us its exact coordinates and rotation, etc. But what we want is an option called the extras. If we go into the extras tab here, we have got something called material swap, which gives us other materials assigned to this type of floor panel. The way Bethesda designed the game was that when you go ahead and build an item, the level designers could just pick and choose which one they wanted, which someone else would have already assigned to that type of floor panel. So you won't be able to do this with every item, but this in particular floor panel has all of these materials assigned to them. So if we go ahead and select BLD Clean, which is the name of one of the materials, and hit OK, it's now a clean material. 
and we can do it again for other ones as well. We have also got clean red material, so it turns it as slightly redder, etc. And all of these depend on what kind of materials were built into the game to be assigned with that panel. So if we go ahead and select the clean one, just because it looks pretty, then we have got that ready to go, and that is now clean. And it will be that way forever, and it will only affect the one that we select. So what we can do is that we can select all of these floor panels, and then we can make them all clean, if I can select the uh, correct item that is. I'm clicking on some of the dust right now. There we go. And now hit edit, make it clean, etc. And then we have got that ready to go. So an awful lot of the materials in the game actually have this. We can go ahead and select this wall right here. And again in the extras tab, we have got the material swap options for BLD clean, which makes it completely clean indeed. That is very, very nice and shiny. Or we can choose a different color. We have got clean red right there, which I believe is what the original game was. And it is in there right now. And it is clean and ready to go. And we can do this for all of the ones that we want to make the place look clean and shiny. So there is the clean ones. And there are the dirty ones. As you can see, huge difference. And this is what it would be if it was pre-war, so to speak. So some of you may say that doesn't look very clean. Well, that's because there are actually some decals sitting on the top of the wall right there. And what we can do, we can delete that. And then it will go away. But in this case, I'm actually going to leave it there just for the sake of preserving it for the video. And that is how you actually change the materials to go ahead and make things clean and restored. And now it is true, not every material in the game has a clean option, so to speak. If we go to this carpet here, as you can see, we can actually change it to some of the other ones. In this case, there is a clean one, so we can use that. But not everything will have a clean option. And we can even do it to this table here. If we select it, right-click, edit, and then go to this feudalist wood model. And there we go, we have now got clean wood for that table as well. So it's a pretty good way to actually very quickly and easily make things look clean and shiny. So we can even do the material swap with these paintings right here that you can see. So if we select the painting, edit, and then we can choose what kind of picture we want. We can do, say, this one painting one, and it changes the picture to a different painting. Let's do that one more time just so that we can see the actual difference, so to speak. So select the painting, right-click, edit, material swap in the extras tab, select painting eight, and we have got a different picture right there. And something else I want to show you guys is how to actually replace broken items with fully functioning restored ones if there is one in the base game. So we're going to do that with this bookcase here. If we go ahead and select the bookcase, right click and edit. And then you can see we can actually change the kind of quality of it like that. But now that it's actually been restored to its original kind of wood texture, I want to actually go ahead and select one which doesn't have broken shelves. So if we select it, hit Control and then F, it will bring up this search and replace window. And as you can see, we can actually get lots of different options of what to replace it with. So now, it is originally called Feudalist Bookcase Broken 02. So logic would dictate if we can find Feudalist Bookcase and just number one, not the broken one, and then hit OK, it is now a fully restored one. That's not bad, is it, people? So now you can do this for any object in the game which actually has a restored option. Let's do it to this one right here. Let's go ahead and hit Control F. Load up that. Okay, so this is Fuelist Bookcase Broken 3. We're going to select Fuelist Bookcase 01. Since it doesn't have the word broken in it, we can assume it is fully working. And hit OK. And there we go. And then there is an extra wall just kind of clipping through there, which is a bit unusual. But never mind. And then once we have actually gone ahead and done that, we can change this material to a completely clean one. So now, that is done. And those bookcases will look properly clean in-game. Alright, so now that we have done those examples, how do we actually get them into the game itself, so to speak? Alright, the way to do that is we need to save it. So if we go up to our top option here and select Save Plugin, we are basically now creating a mod, an ESM folder, or an ESP in this case. So what we will do is that we will save it to our Fallout data folder. This is where you'll actually be able to load everything into the game. And we will give it a name. Let's call it Tut Example. There we go. Hit save. And now that is in the game ready for us to turn on in our load options in whatever mod kind of moderations you have selected, i.e. something like the Nexus Mod Manager, for example. 
So okay, so here we are in the Ballstone Club that we did some work on, and as you can see, our wall textures are now the original clean ones. You can see we have got the original ones on the right, and the ones on the left we have changed to be the clean variants. We've also got the same for the carpet that we changed. You can see that middle one there is clean, as the ones on the top of it and the bottom of it are the dirty variants. Same for the table over here. The table is now a clean one, whereas the other ones have got dust and rust on them. And also, finally, the floors. As you can see, the floor panels are actually the clean wood texture, and the ones at the back here are the original dirty ones. And also, as you can see, as we go into our bookcase area here, these are now the restored ones with the clean texture on, whereas the original wood kind of looked like that. It looked all dirty and broken. But now, they are fully restored and ready to go. And you can do this for all of the items that you want to replace, assuming that there is one in the game. However, that being said, if there isn't a clean texture, for example, if you have the skills and knowledge on how to do so, there is nothing stopping you from creating your very own texture and importing it into the creation kit either. And you can do this for pretty much every object in the game, as long as you have the know-how to do it. So next up in the tutorial, I'm going to show you a better example of going ahead and replacing the objects with restored ones. And also, I'm going to show you how to make objects scrappable in the settlement building mode. So here we are at Croup Manor, a location I'm sure many of you guys are aware, has a lot of broken stuff that you cannot restore in the vanilla game. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at these roof tiles here. As you can see, we have huge sections of broken roof tiles, but we also have some which are fully normal and in regular condition. So let's see if we can actually repair this one here. So what we are going to do is we are going to select it and delete it. And the reason we have done that is because right next to it, we actually have one that is in perfect condition. So what we can do is that we can turn on our snapping by selecting that option right there. You definitely want that if you want to get things lined up correctly. And with the object selected, the restored roof section, hold control and hit D. And that has made a duplicate of it. So now we can hit E in order to change its location. And we get our little axis here to go ahead and change where it is. And then we can drag it right along the top. And seeing as we have selected the snapping, we can actually line it up pretty darn perfectly. If we turn that off, then we can actually move it willy-nilly, but we might miss it, etc. So let's go ahead and leave it there with our snapping on. And then we can just do the same to replace all of the roof sections. Boom, there we go. So now, as you can see, it is starting to all snap together quite nicely indeed. One thing I have noticed is that it doesn't actually match up quite perfectly, but we can select this item here, hit E to go ahead and get our extrude options in order to move it. And then we can just move it very slightly like that. There we go. So now they all match up perfectly. A very quick and easy way to actually go ahead and replace a lot of the items is to just go ahead and replace them with one which is restored. In which case, as you can see here, we have got this broken pillar right here. We have also got another one right over there. So what we can do is we can select this, hold control and hit F. Once we have done that, we will get this search and replace window. And this will be able to replace the item with one that we know is correct. In which case, it's actually given us the correct option straight away. But if you select this item, you can see we've got lots of different items we can actually use to replace it with. But in this case, I know just from my head that the name of the correct one is right here. So hit OK. Oh, actually, that is not the correct one. That is a metal one, isn't it? So what we can do if we are not sure of what the correct name is, we can select one which is restored, hit edit, and it is this one. It is coal one. It is house K ground add on deck K post coal zero one. Control F. And now we get this. Let's go ahead and do selection only. So the two we have selected will be replaced. And let's select the post coal one right there. And then hit OK. All right, it is replaced one. Yep, as you can see, that is now the correct pillar. We have gone ahead and selected that properly and it has changed it. Let's go ahead and select coal number one. That one right there. Boom, there we go. And now they are both fully restored, so to speak. So let's actually look at how you go ahead and scrap items you don't want that normally you can't scrap in the regular settlement mode. Let's say if we want to actually get rid of this, 
in game in the settlement mode how do we go ahead and scrap this bit of fencing which normally we cannot scrap this is a bit more complicated it involves doing what is called creating a recipe and once we have created said recipe we are able to scrap it in the settlement mode okay so what we need to do is right click this item once we have selected it and hit edit and then once we have done that we go to edit base now don't change anything in here all we want to do is highlight its name here copy that and now we need to actually name the item in order to scrap it if you don't give it a display name you will not be able to scrap it so let's just call it broken fence okay so now when we select it in the settlement mode it will be called broken fence and as I said you need to copy this don't change any of the words or anything just hit OK. And now we need to find this item in the objects window. Again, if you're not sure how to find it, go to view and select object window, in which case we already have it. And now we are going to copy and paste that name in the filter right there. And here we go. It has given me the object in game. So we can go ahead and select that. Yep, that is the item indeed. And now what we need to do is right click it and then we need to select create recipe so now we have done that if we want to go ahead and copy and paste it in again boom that's our recipe right there that one with the little blue symbol and we can go ahead and enter into our recipe and as you can see it's given us an ID which we can go ahead and leave alone but there are some other things as well which I believe that I've never done so this is actually a bit of a risk here I believe if you go into this object right here required item list it will give us what we need to actually build it so to speak so let's go ahead and try this let's go ahead and select new and let's find wood so that it actually gives us some wood so to speak see wood components hit ok and it gives us five wood when we scrap that now i've never done this before so hopefully it works and hit ok now that recipe is in the game we are actually now able to scrap that item once we enter the settlement mode and it will be the same for this one it will not be the same for this one because that is actually a different 3D model. You would have to go ahead and create a recipe for that one as well. But these two appear to be the same model. So we can go ahead and scrap those in game. So now let's go ahead and save it again. And let's jump in game and see if all of our changes have actually worked. So here we are at Croup Manor, and as you can see, our material replacement on the roof section worked and the actual sections have been repaired. As you can see there, it's not quite lined up, the snapping went a little bit wrong there, so you've got to take your time in order to make sure you get it lined up correctly. But now, let's go ahead and see if we can actually scrap the items that we made scrappable. And now as you can see, these fences, not scrappable, can't do anything with them. But this one here... It is now called Broken Fence. We can scrap it and we get the wood for it. So there we go, guys. It worked. But as you can see, that one which we told not to be scrappable is not scrappable. But the ones we told to be are. So that is fantastic news. So thanks very much for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped you a little bit if you want to learn how to restore places similar to what I've done in the past. As you can see, it actually is pretty simple to do it. You just need to know how to do it. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle after all. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a like and a thumbs up. It is greatly appreciated. Remember to check out some of the cool Patreon people below. And I'll see you next time. This has been the final render. And you have been the audience. Until next time, farewell. Maybe you shouldn't antagonize the monster like that, Jess. You know, he's going to be extremely jealous of Mike right now. If you keep talking like that, something bad will... What did I just say?